So, this is why you do science, because really, it's exciting, it's endlessly interesting, it fascinates the hell out of you, and you never know what you're going to come up with. Because in these little investigations we've been doing, what I think I've come up with is a new kind of wave generator. And this is it. This will um, be cheap to make, never wear out, and produce energy. What more could you want? Anyway, let's have a closer look at it. In a previous video called Perpetual Battery, we made one of these. Dead simple, it's based on a patent, patent number 4153757 by William Clark. It's essentially an energy scavenger. Now you really ought to read that patent before you start asking questions, because most of the questions you're going to ask, they're in that patent. So fish out the patent, have a read, then ask your questions. This thing was super easy to make. Um, just a bit of nylon block, already had holes in it, copper tube, aluminium tube, shove them in, you've made your device. I'll go through it on the uh, other video, so if you're interested, have a look at that other video. And there have been two main comments about it. One is that it's just galvanic action. And, you know, I don't know what to say. We, we did something in the video to show it wasn't, but hey-ho, if you're convinced it is, that's your business. And the other one was, how about we stick it in the sea? Now, if we put that in the sea, it would be galvanic action. It's two different metals. It's in an environment where it's going to rot. It would be a kind of like very poor battery. What we really need to test the action of the sea is something that isn't going to rot. And of course, we've been working on those kind of materials. We've got a ton of videos on the members channel working with carbons. Some great research papers out from China working with carbon and the action of salt water over carbon. So we've got a ton of carbon materials we can use. Now, I made exactly the same thing. But instead of using two metals, I use two carbon rods, because I've got these carbon rods lying around. If you want these carbon rods, really easy to get hold of them. Uh, get a disposed of zinc carbon lantern battery, open it up, pull out the rods, and you'll have a load of them. They're quite cheap to get, actually, but it also is easy to get them for free if you just scout out a few of those batteries. Now, these things are made predominantly of carbon clay and wax. They um, mix the carbon and the clay, pressurise it, cook it, impregnate it with wax. The wax is a little bit of a bummer, but you know, we can live with it because we've got a surface. But there's no metal in here at all. And if we put this into a salt water environment, then absolutely nothing's gonna happen in terms of galvanic action. So of course the challenge now is to test that. So let's give that a go. Okay, I've got a very simple setup here. What I've got here is a beaker of salt water. It's just tap water with a bit of table salt added to mimic the sea. And there's the multimeter reading there, which is reading in microamps. And I've attached my little two carbon blocks to a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor. And we're going to dip it in and out of that water and see what happens to that reading. Okay, we are getting about a microamp. Nobody's claiming that's a huge amount of power, okay? But a microamp power generation just by dipping carbon rods in and out of salt water. You've got to be amazed by that. I certainly am. So this will never run your car. That's very true. It won't charge your mobile phone and it won't run your car. But have you seen the first electric motor? The first electric motor was a bit of wire dangling in the mercury dish. There's no way that would run your car either. It's not about final product, it's about an interesting thing that is probably worth exploring and seeing what you can develop it into. That's what it's all about. If you don't find it interesting because you can't use it, well, you're probably on the wrong channel. But this is definitely, to my mind, interesting to see what we can do with it. So, of course, the very next step is to build a big one. So how to make this? Actually a piece of cake. So you need some of these things, they're called KD blocks, they're used for putting cupboards together and they have a hole in them already and that hole is about four millimetres. So you need to drill it out to the same distance as your carbon rods, which is usually about eight millimetres. 
We have a whole load of these carbon rods and you can either buy these carbon rods as carbon rods in lots of different lengths. I've got a whole bunch this size and there's no other reason for them being this size than that's what I happen to have. You can reclaim them from um, zinc carbon batteries and zinc carbon batteries work really well. They are impregnated with wax so sometimes it might help to burn the wax out. All you actually do is grab your block, you've got a bit of wire here where I've stripped one end and just poke the stripped end of the wire down into the hole you've just made, take your carbon rod and tap it into place. That's it, do exactly the same with the black and you end up with something that looks like that and that is a single unit. We make nine more like that and bolt them together and you end up with that. Then all I've done is take all those wires together and solder them together. That's it. That is how you make the device. Now that device was made like that because it's extremely easy to make. In this thing, geometry matters. You really must check out the patent I keep telling you about, about 4153757. Really read it because that guy talks about geometry. We've used these rods no other reason than their rods we have, their rods that are easy to get hold of, they're very cheap and you can replicate it easily. It is a surface phenomenon, so a higher surface area material like this sort of stuff would work really, really well. This is a clay tablet that we make. They've shown on the, how to make this. It's on the members channel from basically clay you dig out from your hill and a bit of graphite mixed in and then baked. If you're worried about not having a kiln, equally, I've done a kiln video on how to make a kiln. So that's how you make those. So lots of people have suggested this and as I live by the sea, I've come down here to give our new device a test. It's going to be a bit difficult for you to see the test meter. It's a tiny test meter. But I've got it set on the micro amp reading and I'm going to take a test reading of it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it went up to 10 micro amps, which is not brilliant. Okay, so, so I'm sorry I couldn't show you the meter reading in the sea, but it was difficult enough trying not to drop everything in there. So what I've done is I've come back to the lab and I've hooked it up to its usual 5.1 kilo ohm um, resistor. It's on the meeting at microamp reading and here is my C simulation. It is a pot filled with salt water and I'm going to put our generator device in that pot and slosh it around a bit to simulate the waves. If you have a look at the reading you'll see the reading change and there you go, 5 microamps just by dipping it in. And if I slosh that around a bit, we can see the generation changing. That was quite good. There you go, 11 microamps. <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway, me um, talking about this in public here on the uh, YouTube, the internet, means this now belongs to everybody. If you want to develop this and work with it and make something that is an actual unit, I'll be looking at that, then you're more than welcome to. It's now public domain, which I think is really super cool. Now, if you want to understand this, you, need, you do need to look at a few videos. You're going to have to look at the perpetual battery video. You're going to have to read the patent that I mentioned in there. There's another video about the working mechanism of this that you really need to watch. And you have, obviously have to have read this video. Now it's going to be the minimum requirement of the background that you're going to need. If you have a look at those things, you're going to be pretty well versed in it. It would help if you have a, have a look at some of the stuff on charge separation on graphene surfaces. That would really help as well. But if you get those basic bits of information, you're in a very good position to move this thing forward. So I thought I'd share all that with you because it's just wonderful, I think. And I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.